Hello and welcome to Your United Way. My name is Zaina Renfro and I'm here today with Ron Crouch from the Kentucky Center of Data, or the Kentucky Data Center. Kentucky State Data Center, right. And it is out of the University of Louisville. Right. And uh, we're privileged today to have you here. Um, this morning you presented at the Paducah Area Chamber of Commerce breakfast and took a lot of statistics and put them out in a form where people understand what you are saying. A lot of us don't understand graphs and pie charts and, and numbers and numbers and numbers, but uh, you have a great way of being able to uh, let us know where our where our country, uh, even globally, we're going, but uh, also breaking it down into local local facts and figures. And I'm hoping today you can share some of this with our community because I really think it is excellent knowledge to know whether you are a young family, a young student, uh, a senior citizen, or someone who's seeking employment, looking to open a new business, uh, whatever. The information you have is really, really interesting. So I hope you can share some of that with us. Thanks, thanks, Lana. But I uh, uh, should mention, actually, uh, part of my career was a director of planning research in, for Metro United Way in Louisville from 1981 to 88. So I got some of my uh, cut my teeth on data uh, through the United Way. Mm -hmm. I used to also work for the Legislative Research Commission in Frankfort, Kentucky in the Health and Welfare Committee as well. And I've been at U of L now for uh, almost 20 years as mm -hmm. Director of Kentucky State Data Center. We are the official clearinghouse for census data for the state of Kentucky. So we have detailed data for every city and county in the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, people can go to our website, just Kentucky State Data Center, and get individual data. Mm -hmm. uh, and our job is sort of to paint a picture of what Kentucky looks like and where we're going and where we've been. Uh, and, you know, we've got some major opportunities and challenges both. Uh, the good news for Kentucky is uh, if you look around the country now, the northern part of the country, the northeast, is in decline population-wise, too cold, people are moving to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, the west is growing, but uh, uh, also uh, less educated, less skilled, because they've got a growing immigrant population, which they're not doing a good job of educating. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the southeast has the most opportunities to do well if we t make the right decisions and uh, put our uh, funding and our monies and our, and our efforts and our volunteer work uh, where we need to, to to help us out. So when you say that, that this area, this community, Kentucky as a whole needs to concentrate their efforts, what can um, the person that's watching us today come to expect or come to look for or even support and even work towards? Well, you know, the good news is if we look around the country at the trends, uh, 90% of all domestic growth now, people move from one place to another, is taking place in the southeast, which includes Kentucky. We've got a warm climate, we've got four seasons, we, we've got uh, good interstate systems. Uh, we're really improving educationally. Kentucky now is no longer at the bottom, even though we keep hearing that, our younger population is much better educated. Mm -hmm. But the issues are, we've got several things going on worldwide now, not just in the United States or Kentucky, this world is going through a major demographic revolution. We've always thought of population growth due to fertility and births and lots of kids. Mm -hmm. What's now happening worldwide is the population is growing, but the main reason population is growing now is no longer fertility and births. It's now due to longevity and people living longer. And they so are doing that. They are living a lot longer, so we're going to have a lot more old, older people in the, in the state, in the nation, in McCracken County. Uh, well, and if I can interrupt, that, that translates to us to say that our population is aging and that we'll need to start thinking about and looking towards the services to provide for an elder population, which could be medical or uh, lots of different services that are involved. In well, health services, also maybe retraining, retooling. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I use a phrase a lot. We have to change our mindset from, from K through 12 to K through 80. Not once a life learning, but a lifetime of learning. We're gonna have to retrain, retool ourselves over and over again. You know, a big issue for McCracken County, I understand, is uh, you're concerned, concerned about manufacturing job loss and you are losing yes. manufacturing jobs, but the entire country is. And what's happening is those jobs are being automated and none of the machines now. It's not just going overseas, it's just being automated. So what that means is even workers in manufacturing who used to be able to work with a strong back and a weak mind and not much education, you're gonna have to be better educated, better skilled, because those jobs require maybe using computers, uh, using math, uh, being able to, to think and do complex tasks. So, so the jobs are getting smarter. So it's saying to us in, in the public what we need to do is when we do lose those manufacturing jobs, not continue to sit and wait for another one to replace it, but to change ourselves and evolve ourselves to evolve with the community globally and, and, and uh, improve our skills. Right. You know, if you look in, if you look in McCracken County, the, the latest data through 2005 shows manufacturing jobs continue to decline about 15% in the last four years. Uh, it also shows that uh, 
you're growing in retail jobs, you're growing in uh, health, health and medical jobs. With an aging population, you're going to see a, a lot more opportunities, uh, need for nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, uh, pharmacists, and things like that. Also, the potential to develop uh, major medical products, so that may be a manufacturing industry in the future, not manufacturing cars, but manufacturing medical products, medical devices, also the just the healthcare provider needs, things like that. So that's going to be a growing industry. Um, let's say retail trade is growing somewhat. Government's actually flat. We, we keep attacking government, how bad government is and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I want government. I want my, my toys safe. I want my food inspected. I want roads. I want bridges. I think we need to see ourselves as a where the government and the private sector work together for the benefit of all Americans. I think one of the biggest battles we face in this country is what I call, and I didn't really mention this today and I should have at the, at the chamber meeting, we've got a battle between John Wayne and rugged individualism and Little House on the Prairie. I much prefer Little House on the Prairie, but Little House on the Prairie, you took care of yourself, mm -hmm. you watched after yourself and your family, but you also watched after your neighbor and you took care of your neighbor. And going back to what the community can do, mm -hmm. it's important to do volunteer work, reach out, maybe do, do some tutoring for, for low-income students or students at risk. Uh, uh, you know, work with your neighbor-to-neighbor, uh, -neighbor, work with your elderly population, mm -hmm. make sure they're safe. One of the big issues in Paducah now, there are more households with people living alone than there are households with children. 29.6% of households in Paducah, McCracken County have children mm -hmm. under 18, 29.7, just slightly more, are living alone, and one in six households in Paducah is a person 65 or over living by themselves, so there's going to be a lot of needs there. The other issue is, even though the number of kids is, is actually shrinking somewhat, not because they left, we keep getting that wrong, mm -hmm. the largest population in the country is the baby boom population born between 1946 and 1964. Mm -hmm. We are now in our mid-40s to our early 60s. I'm one of those. I'm, I'm one of the leading baby boomers. <laughs> so that's who we are. We're the largest population ever. The population behind us is a much smaller population. There's fewer people in their 20s in this country uh, across the board than there is in their 40s. So it's not that so we're... So when we talk about young people not coming back here, or young people not being present in our community, that's really not true, is it? No. You know, uh, if you look at the 1990-2000 census data, McCracken County had a 17% a loss in the population 25 to 34. But if you actually looked at that same age group 10 years younger, 10 years earlier, you actually had a small gain. Mm -hmm. So they didn't leave. It's just a smaller cohort that replaced the baby boomers and we're the largest population ever. And for some reason, we're starting to get old. I uh, why. And, you know, we're, we're now turning 61. So that's going to be a challenge for the next 10, 20, 30 years. The other issue is that younger population is actually smaller number but it doesn't make them less important. It probably makes them more important because mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot of, and we're going to have a number of young kids who are going to be ha having to take care of an, a, 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 an aging population. The other issue there that aging population tends to be white, not as many white like I am, mm -hmm. but the younger population is more diverse. 80% uh, of the growth in McCracken County uh, has been minority, black, Asian, or Hispanic. Only 20% has been white, so you're seeing a, a big shift. It also an issue you do have, which is very, very difficult. 41.8% of kids now in McCracken County are born to unmarried mothers, 41.8. 41.8%. That's the latest data. That's scary. That's up from 8% in 1970. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge increase, both in numbers and percentage. And those are not high school, those are not Murphy Browns, like Dan Quayle said, college mm -hmm. graduates. That's a myth. Only one in 20 women who have a college degree give birth out of wedlock. Well, in the scenario you gave, the John Wayne versus the Little House on the Prairie, I didn't, you didn't say that part this morning, but that's why I enjoy listening to your, your discussions because you do put it in terms we understand. And I think United Way has realized a long time ago, as even when you were in the Louisville office of United Way, that if we don't look at this as a community, government, private, education, that type of relationship, we're not going to get a handle on this. And I think you're all doing something now with uh, with preschool education. Yes, we are. We what, are. What are you? Uh, Success by Six is a trademark program of United Way um, America and Paducah and McCracken County's United Way with the help of your statistics last year. Um, we used that as a foundation on where to start and how to get there and, and know who we're targeting, what, what type of population. Um, we're going to initiate the Success by Six program here and it will help uh, children of preschool school age be prepared to start school and it will even go into starting to educate parents um, on the process of, of having a, their child be successful through school so there's some life skill training there there's some different kinds it's very broad and it has lots of different avenues but we really realize with your help and with with other things we have found out that it's very important that's where the key in our opinion to the success of our community is going to lay and we've got to support uh, 
those young children in our in our in our community. And that's something you know we don't really understand. I, I, I tell a story a lot about you know everybody talks about Kentucky being barefoot and pregnant lots of kids. Mm -hmm. We're actually one of the least likely states in the nation to have children. You need 2.1 kids to replace yourself. That was very and you talked about this more in the education level of of, of Kentucky residents. Right. right for a family to replace itself, there has to be one child for each parent. 0.1 for mortality. Mm -hmm. Kentucky is not 2.1. We're at 1.95. One of the lower ones. All states today, East Mississippi River, except for Georgia, at 2.12 are below replacement. So if we don't bring people in from outside, uh, both foreign-born and from other states, we would be in population decline. Also, because of the changing nature of our young population with fewer kids, mm -hmm. we have no room for throwaway kids anymore. So your success for six becomes very important because, mm -hmm. you know, this may be an issue for volunteers for United Way to reach out and, and mentor some young children, uh, mentor some families who maybe mm -hmm. the parents uh, have poor reading skills to, to mm -hmm. bring up their education level. Mm -hmm. If you can educate the parents, that may also uh, put some emphasis on them also re reaching out and, and educating their kids as well. It makes a win-win situation for the family, the child. Uh, the community right. uh, across the board. And I, I would totally support that, you know, that effort. Mm -hmm. I just had a, a report republished last week. If anybody wants to look at it, they can go to the, the Center for Public Education. Mm -hmm. It's part of the National School Board Association, but if you put in your search engine, engine the Center for Public Education, I've got a new report called uh, the, it, the United States of Education is what it's titled, and then the subtitle is uh, A Guide to the Demographic Challenges of America. Mm -hmm. And one section is on the whole the importance of preschool education and how that how that affects children prepares them for learning especially for those kids at risk mm -hmm. and you know with with 41.8 percent unmarried and by the way those are not teenage girls uh, the vast majority of unmarried births now are to women in their 20s with some in their 30s uh, teen births are going way down that's mm -hmm. the great news but kids at risk are going up one of the issues is as we transition from a manufacturing blue collar economy to a service economy and a retail economy the jobs are getting smarter people have to be able to read and write and think better you know that's going to be a challenge for us and we need to put emphasis on those, that early childhood education so these kids come to school ready to learn and can come, overcome some of the barriers. We, you know, a lot of times we blame education for our problems. Mm -hmm. Well, the education, the problems, the problems in education start before education. They start in the home. Correct. And if those kids are at risk and they come to school uh, not ready to learn, that's not the school's, pro it is the school's problem, but it's not the school's fault. There's so not enough time, time, dollars, or or programs that will help straighten out the vast problem that that is. Right. So, so we, we've got to work with these families, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, uh, issues like pr providing uh, uh, free breakfast programs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, providing summer job programs for kids at risk. Uh, mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things we can do to help uh, mitigate the risk factors for this young population. And unfortunately, nationwide, we are losing our middle class, which scares me to death. Now explain a little bit because that did catch my attention this morning when you talked about that. How, what do you mean when you say we're losing our middle class? If you look at what's happening now, uh, in the last 25 years, according to Frank Levy from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, 80% of all income gains have gone to the top 1% of the population. Uh, what was it, Leona Le 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 Helmsley, yeah, who see. died recently, mm -hmm. said only little people pay taxes? You know, we're, we're becoming a, a, a basically a society that's what I call a race towards the bottom where a, a large portion of the population is making less and less money, less and less income, mm -hmm. and a few people at the top are making a lot of money. That's not my America. My America is a country of the people, by the people, and for mm -hmm. the people, not of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. Now, mm -hmm. corporations who are responsible are great, but the, the top 25 hedge fund managers in New York last uh, year made $570 million each. That is obscene. Uh, they don't deserve it. They should be taxed at a much higher rate. We need to have a progressive tax system again because I want government money to go into roads and bridges and childhood education, and I want my food inspected. I want my toys safe. We've got to look at this whole thing. We're in this together, little house on the prairie. Yes, you take care of yourself, but you also watch out for your neighbor. And that's such a good lesson for every, everyone in this that's watching this show today, everyone in Paducah, McCracken County, or the state of Kentucky can do that with little effort. You know, and the other issue, you know, and I know immigration is becoming a big issue in the country. Yes. And one of the things I'm saying now when I go around the country, I just spoke in California a couple of days ago. I spoke in New York a month ago. I'm speaking in Kansas next, uh, next uh, month. We've got to rethink this issue of immigration. I think immigration is actually positive. For some reason, I think most Americans actually uh, come from immigrants. Just amazing to me. <laughs> and we want to keep immigrants out. But I, think, I don't think there's very many Native Americans in this country anymore, less than 1%. Most mm -hmm. of us, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, so, so forth, came to this country as immigrants. Mm -hmm. Only three countries now in the entire world 
uh, developed countries have any population growth at all. Those are Canada, Australia, and the United States of America. Mm -hmm. All three countries have one common denominator. They're settler nations that have allowed people to come in from outside. If, if we do not allow immigrants to come in from outside, we as a country would actually be in population decline. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a challenge for us. What I'm saying is we need to pay the Minutemen to go down the Mexican border, mm -hmm. not to build walls, tear those walls down. We need to have those Minutemen build lemonade stands, send out free lemonade and balloons. If a Hispanic comes close to the border, say, please come across because we're going to need your young workforce to take care of an aging population in the United States, mm -hmm. an aging population in Kentucky, an aging population in McCracken County. Your median age is 39. For the state, it's 35. So you're actually four years be above the, uh, mm -hmm. the national average. Anybody who wants to feel young, just come to McCracken County. Uh, uh, you know, you'll see older people. Of course, you can even go down to some other counties and feel even, you know, uh, even better. I think if you go down to Hickman or places like that, they're, they're really old. <laughs> but uh, but we're, we're an aging society. Well, and the interesting thing I keep going back to is the misunderstanding or the misperception that's out there that our children are, are being born here and they're leaving. Mm -hmm. um, th I guess the thing that drove home this morning the most when I was listening to you was that that's not true. They weren't there in the first place. Right. And we do, actually, I think you said 800 and something, we had increased in that age bracket to where mm -hmm. we have shown some, and for the average of the state, maybe a little more than other folks do. But the thing we're missing is that middle that middle family that's going to be able to do these jobs and, and uh, that's where you talk about immigration being an important part. Right, well, and, and also the issue of, of you know diversity. The reality is that you know McCracken County to do well is going to have to make sure you're investing in all of your citizens regardless of their skin color, regardless of their uh, uh, gender regardless of their academic performance and mm -hmm. you do have a much higher growth in your black population I think your probably Hispanic population is much larger than what the official numbers show mm -hmm. any data I put out census data is persons who fill out the census form but many many Hispanics are undocumented right. and you know some Hispanics now are afraid to send their kids to school because they're afraid that will uh, impact their immigration status you know we, we I, I, I want these I want these kids in school mm -hmm. and and actually if, if a kid is born here or a kid comes here as a three or four year old I want them to go through the United States school system I, I, I don't mind giving subsidized education mm -hmm. for community colleges in, in state tuition because that's going to be our future and I want everybody here educated skill you know we hear a lot about well they should link learn, learn English well you know it bothers me. I, 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 I took French in high school. I took uh, Spanish in high school. I took German in college. I don't remember any of it, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I know a few words. Abiner uh, saying, Sprechen Sie Deutsch near sehr gut, Kamus Dive is in Spanish, things like that. <laughs> but uh, maybe the problem in this country is we need to get off this battle. We need to have everybody learning English. Maybe we in this country have, need to have everybody learning the second language. Well, and I was going to mention that because I think, and I do try to travel too and also notice what's the surroundings that are around me. But at the same time, um, I don't think locally sometimes we forget how important it is. The rest of the global world is a bilingual um, or multiple language uh, uh, communities and how important it is that we do uh, open ourselves up to realize that when you talk about diversity and, and accommodating those folks that are coming into our community, sometimes it does include learning that extra language or being uh, being able to speak two languages and being able to accommodate those folks so that they thrive also. And you, know, and you go to Europe and people are multilingual like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are also are, are just bilingual, they only speak a couple languages and then there's some people who are Americans. Mm -hmm. And we don't we speak one language. We need to rethink that whole issue about, you know, we're going to be a universal nation of all human hues, creeds, colors, and national ancestries. That should be actually very good news for us. You know, how do we invest in that? You know, when we compete in a global economy by having this diversity, uh, ha having multiple language speakers, we, we can really be much more successful. And some of the research has shown, too, we talk about, well, when these, when these kids come up from uh, Mexico, we should teach them English only, English immersion, and don't teach them in, any Spanish at all. Some of the research has shown, which shows up in my article, that I just wrote the uh, the United States of Education. Uh, if you take a preschool kid who is Hispanic, and you basically start out with Spanish, and then then gradually introduce English, uh, English, you know, then that student becomes much a much quick, quicker learner of English. Mm -hmm. So you know, this whole issue of just basically doing away with all Spanish education instruction, doing English only, 
has not shown up to work well, it's doing bilingual education that works. Mm -hmm. And like I say, maybe maybe we need to have bilingual education in all our schools so our, mm -hmm. so our, our young kids learn can learn uh, Spanish, can learn German, can learn French, uh, but learn um, a multicultural language. Well, and this is a little bit off track, but I think it's a question that's in my mind right now. As a local resident of Paducah McCracken County, when we talk about things changing at a local level, at a state level, uh, national level, even global, what can we do here um, locally to encourage those policy makers and those people that make those decisions? What can we do locally to encourage them to see this larger picture? Um, you know, I, and I think basically understand what's going on. You know, talk to your, your county judge, talk to your mayor, uh, talk to your commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk to your uh, city council persons, uh, talk to your state legislators, say, hey, you know, we want to make sure that there's enough funding. You know, there's nothing wrong with taxes. Everybody keeps saying taxes are bad and vote for me because I'll cut your taxes. Scares me to death. Folks, I want, I want clean water. I want, I want mm -hmm. good food. I want my food inspected. I want my toys safe. I want roads. I want bridges. There's a lot of things that government does that is very good. It helps the business community. And it's not getting cheaper. Yeah, and it's not going to get cheaper. <laughs> and we got bridges that are basically falling down in some places. And we haven't built them up. For, we haven't done any, any repair work for 40 years on them. You know, we need to have the public sector and private sector working together. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to pay taxes that are fair where everybody pays, pays enough taxes. Uh, they need to be spent wisely. I don't disagree with that at all, but we need the public and private sector working together. Uh, tell your legislators, you know, we need to pay off the national debt. The national debt now, uh, under the current president, is up to $50 trillion long term. It was $20 trillion when he took office seven years ago. He's basically borrowed money, gave huge tax cuts, and then raised expenditures. You can't do that. You, and anybody in your household knows you balance your budget. Uh, some people now are talking about pay-go policies where if you're a legislator, uh, you don't spend money you don't have, and if you do spend money, you make sure you have revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. You don't basically spend like a drunken sailor and, and put it up on your credit card, which we're doing now. We're going to pay a big price down the road, and at the same time, a huge population gets ready to retire boomers, which we're ready to do, and we got a young population coming up of at-risk kids across the country, not in McCracken County is no different. Uh, we're going to need to have those dollars to put into public education. There's some good private schools, but there's some very good public schools. As you mentioned earlier, my report, Kentucky now is above the national average in young adults 25 to 34 finishing high school degree. Uh, we are no longer 49th, thank God, from Mississippi, which what, what we used to be. Our older population is, but our younger population, Kentucky's, welfare, well, or Kentucky's education reform, we are actually doing pretty well. Our kids look pretty good. We actually, in Kentucky, a higher percentage of our kids are ready to go to college than most other states. Now we don't really? know that, mm -hmm. but what the data shows is we look pretty good in Kentucky. Kentucky's doing good. The, the old Kentucky we have, we're down near the bottom, everything's bad, that's changing. Mm -hmm. Kentucky's moving up. We're not doing up as much as I'd like to see. We still need to make a lot of investments, but the Southwest does not look very good now. The Northeast, people are leaving in droves. Uh, mm -hmm. We have real opportunities if we play our cards right, if we make wise decisions and wise investments, both public and private, and those wise investments will be how do you take care of an aging population that's going to be in need. Uh, if people, you know, if people are, are, are getting older but they're still functioning, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need to take care of those people who are frail. We need to take care of these young families who are struggling. And I'm afraid that a lot of companies now are trying to lower wages and benefits so we can compete against India and China, which I think is a big mistake because I think both those countries are more likely to collapse in 10, 20 years because of their internal population problems, mm -hmm. internal political problems, than they are to be our economic competitors. Uh, well, and you said this <coughs> morning you could see the shift towards any kind of um, infrastructure or industry shifting to two other, away from India and China and shifting to uh, you said Canada and South America. Yeah, if I look, when I look at South America, I think South America is going to be a group, big growth area. And, you know, we can get Hispanics for free now. We may have to hire Rick Pitino out of U of L to go down the Mexican border when he <laughs> retires from U of L and give out signing bonuses to get Hispanics to come across the border because Mexico now is at replacement level only. They're not having a lot of kids anymore. Right now, the growth is in their young adult population. In 20, 30 years, it'll be in their older adult population. That's probably a, a, a population pyramid, a population structure where it's going to have economic prosperity and where they're not, they may not want to come across the border anymore and we're trying to keep them out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, try to, we need to try to get them as soon as we can because they're not going to want to come in 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's, you know, South America, Central America, uh, actually Mexico is part of North America, mm -hmm. all look, look good. 
Uh, Canada is doing very well. Canada is only growing because of immigration. Without immigration, Canada would not grow at all. Canada would be a major population decline. They have 1.5 kids per family. We have about 2.04, barely below replacement. Canada way below replacement. Now, Canada's population growth is in the Asian population. But, uh, you know, the, the good news is we're a nation of immigrants. We always have been a nation of immigrants. We need to make sure they're legal, make, bring them out of the shadows. Uh, that's going to be an important issue for the Hispanic population. I think the biggest problem with illegal immigration is caused by the lack of legal immigration. Mm -hmm. We need more guest worker programs, green card programs, programs that bring people out of the shadows and we'll need them. We need employers to pay good wages, fair wages, mm -hmm. not, not subsidized with cheap labor who is uh, who, from Mexico where they're, since they're undocumented, they can't complain. Mm -hmm. But we need to just rethink all these issues. And I think, again, I think North America may be the, North, North America and South America may be the new economic engines. I'm not sure the, Asia's got some po possibilities, but, it, but also some problems, because Asia tends to keep going from cheap labor to cheap labor. They go from one country to another, and the, the main thing they chase is low dollars and low pay. Mm -hmm. I don't want to chase low dollars and low pay, because I want people in this country to be a middle class, of the people, by the people, and for the people. How do, we, how do we make sure we deal with that? And right now, I think we're moving towards the bottom, what I call a sharecropper society, where a few people at the top do well. We're going back to the 19, 1890s, 1920s, a few rich and the rest of us. I want a very rich population, but I want it to be spread across to, to the middle class and, and, mm -hmm. and people move upward. Well, we've got uh, about two, three minutes left to talk, and, and uh, once again, I want to reiterate how important it is to have you here in our community to be able to decipher all those numbers for us um, in a way that we understand it and can use it. Um, United Way has used your information for several years, um, being able to project where we need to go with early childhood education, how many people we're going to be looking at, how we need to deal with our seniors, and along with that comes their needs, whether they're health needs, mental needs food needs, clothing needs, you know, whatever it is, but we also need to learn that's the way we need to address our community um, in a diverse way. Um, one stop shop doesn't fit everybody. Everybody needs that information in a little different way. So in the last minute, if I can just think of, if you can think of anything you can leave us with that gives us a powerful uh, surge to go out and uh, understand and look at our community a little different, what would you say to us? Well, you know, I think the good news is McCracken County is moving in the right direction. Uh, a lot of the data looks very good. There are some risk factors as well, though. Uh, I'm a new, new, new grandparent, but I'm a grandparent, so I'm getting older, so I want to take care of old people. But as a grandparent also, I want to make sure my granddaughter is well-educated, well-skilled. Mm -hmm. So we've got to invest across the board in, our, in our, our young children, our families, our aging population. And like I said, we need to have a little a house on a prairie mentality mm -hmm. where we take care of ourselves, but we also take care of our neighbors and take care of our community. And United Way helps do that, so I appreciate what you all do. Well, and I guess the message I'm hearing from you today is education, education, education. And all, on education. all levels. Uh, don't give up. Don't, don't think you can quit ed ed educating yourself at, uh, after you turn 18. It's mm -hmm. going to be a lifelong process over and over again. And we are fortunate enough to be housed today at uh, WKCTC, um, which is a wonderful asset to our community to have here and for people to use. But uh, I think education also takes many forms in life skills, anything you can improve, anything you can learn to improve yourself or those around you. And community uh, colleges give us a big opportunity. My daughter is one of the research researchers over in Versailles for the community technical college system. So uh, oh, we appreciate right what the community technical colleges do as well. Well, I appreciate so much today, Ron, you coming yeah, in and joining thanks. us. And uh, thank you. Thank you, the audience, for listening today and uh, listening to the information we have to deliver. We hope you'll uh, take it, think about it, and use it, and maybe pick up the phone and volunteer someplace um, that'll help uh, you and your family in our community. So this is your United Way. We'll see you again soon.